for Vladisberg. Sees the opening. Delivers again. Michael Firestone. Virginia wins. The Cavaliers are going to the College World Series. He's going to go all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia. Big ball. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. There's steps and there's there's a long way to go for us, but uh, but that's a team that, that's a good one for us. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Neil Barlow, number seven on the men's soccer team. We've got a lot of highlights for you on today's show, but first, here's your play of the week. You know, anybody will tell you in soccer that two nothing scores uh, is a difficult one. And so that's kind of what we uh, discussed at halftime, is just getting the first one. I think they just came, became unraveled after the second one. I mean, because then it started to really just, just hit one after the other. But uh, it's one of those rare days in soccer where everything you hit, for the most part, in that 20-minute span went in. And that, that keeper there, one of the best in the country, and there was just nothing she could do about it. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly has been brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. Live solid, bank solid. Stay tuned. Virginia game highlights are coming up next. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Welcome back to the show. Our football team traveled to Clemson on Saturday. Let's check out the game story. So we're going to hand the football oh, off, and it's fumbled. He put it on the turf. There's a dog pile, and Clemson may have it. And some guys step up and make some plays today, but unfortunately we had some mistakes and against a team that clearly can now be called of championship caliber, having won their division. That we made mistakes in handling the ball today that created some field position issues that made it very challenging for us. And ultimately, those were the things perhaps that swung the scales. Here comes the blitz from Virginia. Play action pass. He's going to fire over the middle. Got a man over and he completes it. Touchdown, Clemson. And another Wildcat set here. Direct snap to Simpson. He's got an opening. Knights his way through the defense. Across the 40. Barks out the signal. Takes the snap. Fakes the throw. Now he'll run it to the left side. Racing ahead across the 20. He charges to the 16-yard line. The who can, I think, is what they were calling. We haven't seen it in a while. Direct snap again. Michael Simpson finds the outside. Racing ahead. Spins in the air to the two-yard line. Michael Simpson behind Rashawn Jackson. They're going to fake the handoff to Simpson. Oh, got Sewell's got an opening. Takes it around the left edge. Touchdown, Virginia. He coasts into the end zone. Hey, we're, we're, we're amongst the fortunate ones. You know, that in uh, two operations here uh, going against CJ, that uh, it's taken everything we've had to, uh, to get the results that we've had, everything the players could give, but they've done a good job with them. He throws on the Jets. Look out. Down the near sideline. All the way to the four-yard line. On first and goal. Ford comes into motion. They're going to hand off to Spiller. Spiller cuts it to the right. Takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. All right, on second down, play action pass rolling left is Sewell, nowhere to throw it. Now he's going to tuck it under. Reese's across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Sewell out of the shotgun, a receiver left. That's Vic Hall. They're going to pitch it to him on an end around. Hall looking to throw. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, Virginia. Joe Torsha makes the catch. Vic Hall pulled a couple tricks out of the old playbook, a couple passes, and it results in Virginia's second touchdown of the day. This is so it's a typical game for Vic Hall. Um, again, another remarkable performance for a player who uh, 
actually was unable to practice um, at all this week. Just another page in the in the. Uh, Here's Parker out of the shotgun. Hands the fakes the hand off to Ellington. Now it's an end around. Reverse going to the far side. Jacoby Ford racing ahead inside the five-yard line of the three. This has been no gimme. Richard Jackson is on. Tigers last week and the last two weeks have missed a number of these. This one is up and it is good. Movement on the line defensively, but no flag. Here's a handoff. Simpson around the left edge. He's got some room to run. Breaks a tackle of these 45. Races ahead to the 50. Sewell's going out of the shotgun now. Two receivers right and one to the left. They're going to fake the handoff. Sewell hanging to the pocket. Lobbing to the end zone. He's got a man. Touchdown. Is it? Michael Simpson over the shoulder. And how about those hoos? It's a three-point game. We just finished on a high note. Okay, there's a lot to feel good and a lot to feel positive about. Certainly there were some plays that we would have liked to have had done better on, but I'm sure the other side felt the same way too. Focus on the positive that just happened at the end of the half. Use that as a high riding into the second half and uh, you know, upgrade our game. Virginia shows three down linemen. Going to rush six. Here's the handoff straight ahead. Ellington knifing his way through defenders. He keeps the legs churning across the six to the five-yard line. They're going to hand off to Ellington. Ellington zigzagging his way ahead. He's to the one-yard line, and he is in. Touchdown, Clemson. With two receivers to the left. Empty backfield now. Parker, quick pass. He completes it to his fullback. Rendrick Taylor pulls right over Ross Seidel. And boy, he is a load to bring down. Sewell's under center. Double tight set. A receiver to each side. They're going to go play action pass. Sewell looking downfield. Got time. He's going to lob this one. He's got his man open. Perry Jones with a tremendous catch. Clemson shows blitz. He takes the snap. Now they bring it. Rashawn Jackson picks up one of those guys, but another one slips through. Coming in to make the sack. They had good pass rushers, and um, they got four good pass rushers. And uh, they just they just won. You know, just sometimes it's just that simple. The pass rusher beat the pass blocker. Cavalier fans, join me, Dave Kane, at Charlottesville Kroger locations for a chance to win two suite tickets and hospitality passes to the Virginia Tech Virginia football game on November 28th. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. More than $4 billion to K-12 public education since 1999. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. With one road game and two at home, it's been a busy week for our men's basketball team. Let's check out the highlights. Jones has it now at the elbow, trying to back his way inside. Puts up a little jump hook in a nice one from about 13 feet out. Mike's our best probably interior scorer, and when he was out of the game, we were pretty much a perimeter-oriented team, and when the shots aren't falling, um, that makes it hard, and I think they, they obviously capitalized on that. Here comes a long transition feed ahead to Lee out. He misses, but Gilchrist does not as he plunges it through with a two-hand jam on the fall. Dominique Jones passing off to Mike Mercer. His pass deflected and taken away by Zaglinski. Sammy's moving his team the other way. Now backs off the accelerator and slows it down. Feeds off right wing. Landisberg with an opening. Takes it down the lane and floats it off the window and good. The first 15 minutes defensively, they, they battled. They really did. They made it hard and it kept us in there. And so there was a step in the right direction that way. Better than it was even against Longwood. But we talk a lot about trying to do the things, eliminate losing. We talked about that. And boy, when it, it unraveled, it unraveled traveled quick and um, and it just it can't happen. Once again led his team in rebounding a season ago. He's on his way again tonight. Pulls up from about 17 and he splashes another one through. Now it comes inside. Famous draws the double team. Now passes off to Gilchrist. Gilchrist underneath the defense. Floats it up and in with a foul. We're down by 10 after two minutes into the second half. We had two turnovers in the first half. You know, they were they were playing well enough with a, a score, poor, poor shooting to still stay in the game. And then um, then our defense slid a little bit. Some of the decision-making went. And then, um, then it was hard for us, and we were just playing catch-up. Ryder going from right to left. Here's a contested jumper from about 10 feet out, and that one was way off the mark. Misfiring on that play. Going the other direction now. Here's a pass. Mike Scott lays it in up close on a great feed from Mustafa Farrakhan. Again, only one three-pointer on five tries. Here's Mienzi passing out. Jeff Jones wide open from three. This time he'll bury it. Keeping the other team out of the lane. 
Here's Ringle handing the ball off. It was tipped away and taken by Zaglinski. He's going the other direction with numbers. Lobs for Scott, who throws it down. Beautiful setup from Sammy Zaglinski, and that's got this place on its feet. Works around a screen from Gadsden. Now tries to pass it back to him, but it's intercepted by Cheryl. He'll feed ahead to Zaglinski. Zaglinski throws on the accelerator and lays it in with a right hand off the window. We always knew that we were capable of playing good defense. It was just a matter of sustaining it throughout a game. And I think tonight we took some great strides um, being able to be continuously locked in on defense. Here's a pass now to Zaglinski on the right wing. Virginia again leads 36-22. Bounce pass down low. Scott kicks it out to Zaglinski, and he unperks a three-pointer from the right wing. As soon as they triple team me, double team me, I just kicked the two of them guards, and then that's how we got them open shots. Ryan Thompson now one for five for the game. Pass comes down low to Scott on the other side. Out to Zaglinski, and he strokes it through from the left corner. Oh, Virginia's got it rolling now. Both the freshmen in the mix now. Nice backdoor feed from Cheryl to Scott, who plunges it through with a one-hand dunk. I fouled out Monday. I was kind of upset about that, so I just wanted to come out and you know, just play hard on my teammates. Boy, when we got the ball rotated, you know, we say side, top, side, uh, it seemed like we could get the kind of looks we wanted, whether it was rhythm threes, post touches, uh, creation off the dribble. And uh, sometimes when you try to just uh, attack a set defense on, you know, either right away or one side touch, it's harder to do, especially against real good defensive teams. And when the ball got rotated, I thought the looks really opened up. And um, what all kinds of looks, different kinds of offense. And then certainly, you know, you got to have some guys take the lid off. End of the first half, we started uh, doing a better job on the glass, not allowing quite as many offensive rebounds, a little more active on the ball, handled the ball, screen better. Hassan gave us a nice lift with uh, size. The more guys you can get touching the ball and get, you know, uh, scoring, the harder you are to defend. So um, I've coached teams that have been, you know, just maybe one or two dominant scores and the rest, but I think there are some guys that uh, we can spread it out with, and I think that's a much better to have a balanced attack. So I hope that'll stay consistent. The big challenge to them is just, just don't go back to, to ground zero, all right? Let's make some, there might be some setbacks, but let's just make sure we're, we're inching in the right way and to just keep knocking. That's our, our big thing and see if we can push that door open and we've got to keep getting better. As I said after the last game, um, there's steps and there's, there's a long way to go for us, but, uh, but that's a team that, that's a good win for us. Our women's basketball team hosted Manhattan and South Carolina Upstate in the John Paul Jones Arena this week. Here are the game stories. I'm still trying to get everybody a decent amount of experience and I did a fairly good job of sharing the minutes today and getting everybody in there and giving them some time. That's really what this is all about right now is to get everybody some time and with that your cohesiveness goes away. You just don't have it. But when I kept the groups in there together you could see that they were pretty cohesive and they could really play well together. It was pretty exciting, you know, that's one of the reasons why I came here, because of the fans and because of the, you know, the gym, the atmosphere and everything like that. Um, I was kind of a little shaky in the beginning because we had, you know how you run out through the smoke, you know, I really didn't know where to go and they didn't tell me where to go, so I'm just running out there like, didn't know what, what to do, but I didn't feel butterflies in my stomach and I felt real confident, especially with Monica right by my side, so, you know, I was just going out there. One thing in my mind, play defense, get some rebounds, push the ball. Just basically what Coach Ryan is telling us to do, and I really wasn't scared. I just felt, I felt right at home. I just think that we are still very much a work in progress, and um, we're just going to have to see where the chips fall. I felt like we were, um, we took a step forward today. I still feel like we have a long way to go. I thought offensively, obviously we did well tonight. Defensively wasn't so good, so I think that Although we did well defensively, we need to get ourselves more in the zone on defense. I just think we were making shots. We came out, I, looked, I watched them warm up, they warmed up well, and um, I was just really pleased with, uh, with our ability to put the ball in the basket tonight. We were focused and ready to go, which I thought was a really good sign because we could have overlooked this team and thought about Tennessee, and I'm just glad we didn't because I was really, I, this team is 2-0, and oh, they played well. Um, in the beginning of, they played well in their first two games and you know, they, they showed they could shoot the ball a little bit and I, and I wanted to see us really hold them down in the second half and I thought we were able to do that defensively. 
it was really good for us because we were able to run a lot. And I think that's that's when we're best is when we're running, when we're getting transition. And I love to run, love to get out there with the guards. So um, I think that's that's where maybe it was easy for me um, just running. But you know that gets tiring. Um, but but yeah, I think you know getting stops on the one end and being able to push the ball and just run is the type of game we like to have. Coming up after the break. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. We've got a very special Olympic sports spotlight up next with field hockey and the NCAA tournament and our men's soccer team winning the 2009 ACC championship. I couldn't be more proud of my team, how they stuck it out. I mean, the first half was played fabulous hockey. We stuck to the game plan. I think we got a little nervous the second half and uh, changed what we were doing a little bit. And it wasn't working and the pressure built, but I think it's a lot of credit to Michigan State, how they played. They played to win also, and um, I'm really happy with the result. We work for it every day. I mean, I told them to get to the Final Four to win championships, you have to win it every day in practice. You can't show up on that day and expect to win if you didn't pay your dues um, along the way. It's a big step, and it's if we didn't if we didn't go on, we, we would have felt like a failure. But we had a failure for season because we had our sights set on that. That was really a, a goal for us, one of the steps along the way. So I think now we feel like uh, we accomplished something. I had the perfect opportunity to shoot the ball. Michelle did a great job screening out the goalie and blocking her vision, which was able to, so it was able to go in. I think you really put yourself in position to win a national championship. You can talk about it a lot, but once you're there and they don't know this yet, it's like one of the most fun things ever. I told them that, so it's worth working for. Because once you get there, you have a sense of we truly have a chance to win a national championship. Um, anything goes then, the pressure is the same for everybody and it's a matter of who can put their game together, keep the poise and keep their eyes focused on uh, what they're doing at the moment. They were just so excited, they were excited to play, they worked the whole season to do it. <laughs> That's just a young team and they're just happy, a happy group and they just wanted to get on that field and play. Both teams have very skilled players, so you see some beautiful hockey things out there, individual and team. So absolutely I expected a fast pace from the field. The ball moved end to end pretty quickly. Both teams have to add players in and substitute to try to keep the pace of the game up. North Carolina came out strong. They were able to get the corners. I thought our defense held off well. We're able to shut down the corner opportunities, except the, the very last one that, that they did score on. They were shutting down uh, Inger in the middle with a double team, and uh, so we had to use other options to try to get upfield, and, and we were in the floor, and Charlie were able to do that out of the back, and that's why we were able to generate the attack. You have corners, uh, we were able to put one in, and um, they read the option on the um, another one to Paige, but the goalkeeper played well, and. Yeah, that's what a championship game's about. You have to be able to put it in when you have the chance. The team played their heart out today. I'm very proud of their efforts. I'm proud of the entire season. And um, it's just unfortunate that uh, it had to end today. five in a row wins we hadn't been scored on so we felt pretty good about ourselves for a lot of reasons going into the ACC tournament. of that game we're all over and we're moving the ball really really well playing with a lot of energy playing with confidence and we reward ourselves with a goal and the way we've been playing 
uh, and keeping teams off the board, I felt like you know, all we need is a goal. But the way we've been playing as a team defensively, our goalkeeper, our backs, uh, it was enough. Now we're, we're on to bigger and better things in the NCAA tournament. I told our guys the day afterwards, ACC championship, great, fantastic, unbelievable accomplishment. It's nobody cares anymore. Let's let's move on. In other Cavalier sports action this week. Sunday, November 22nd is a big day in Virginia athletics with my team hosting our first game in this year's NCAA tournament and the women's basketball team hosting Tennessee in the John Paul Jones Arena. Those are the only home games this week until the Hokies arrive in Scott Stadium next Saturday for one of the great rivalry games in college football. Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. On behalf of all the student athletes at Virginia, I wish you a safe and happy Thanksgiving holiday. And until next time, go Hoos! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.